In the fall of 2019, I asked 120 college freshmen what they thought about themselves. 80% said they felt less worthy than others, and 85% said they didn't believe in their own abilities. And in the last six months, my team and I at Rise Up For You, we asked over 2,000 working professionals what their top challenge was in the workplace today. A whopping 57% said their top challenge was confidence, and 82% wrote down a challenge that was directly correlated to confidence, such as imposter syndrome, not feeling enough, self-doubt, and of course, the perfectionist mindset. And these challenges are the factors that affect our behavior, the ability to take action, and most importantly, how we show up. Today, there are many challenges we face in this world as people. But the greatest tragedy we continue to see is wasted human potential due to a lack of confidence and connection with oneself. It has paralyzed one generation after another and continues to get passed down to today's youth and future generations to come. You see, over time, the term confidence has been inaccurately redefined and minimized to the point that many individuals today have built a false sense of confidence, what I like to call micro-confidence. So let's talk about this. Micro-confidence, what is it? Micro-confidence means that you feel certain, sure, or great in a competency or learned skill. I'm confident in singing, I'm confident in coding, I'm confident in my career, in my business, and so on. But you see, that's not sustainable. And we saw this most recently around the world when COVID-19 hit. Many business owners, hardworking professionals, parents lost their micro-confidence, meaning they lost their jobs, their skill was no longer needed. They lost the external things that brought them security. And the problem is that with that came the loss of self-worth and identity. Because you see this whole time, We've been building our self-worth and our identity off of micro-confidence, external factors, things that are bound to change that should not define who we are, but only enhance who we are. Micro-confidence is always changing because it is outside of us and therefore dependent on multiple factors outside of your control. But really this whole time, we needed to build our macro-confidence a belief in your ability to learn or succeed, a self-confidence within that is not defined by any outside thing, person, or place. Macro-confidence is a deep inner belief that you can learn, a growth mindset, a belief that no matter what happens around you or to you, everything you need is within you to change and overcome any challenges or obstacles, that you are enough and have enough within. It is the macro confidence that says, I'll figure it out, or it's okay if it's not perfect. I'll do it anyway, and if I fall short, I'll reflect on what happened and try again. So, how do we move forward and make a confident shift in our society that is so desperately needed today and for the future? Number one, it always starts when we're young. Educational institutions need to start making shifts to the core curriculum starting in elementary school, incorporating self-confidence and soft skills as major core subjects along with technical skills. I mean, the reality is math, history, and science will only go so far if our students don't have the confidence to take action and step forward with their knowledge. If they don't have the confidence to embrace failure, risk, and the word no, without feeling less than or unworthy when they step into their first career or profession. To the parents, corporate leaders, and educators, be careful which beliefs and thoughts you let out of your mouth and into the ears of a young mind or hungry professional. It only takes one encounter 
to shift them from a dreamer and a doer to a doubter and to you. You were born with confidence. When you were a baby and you fell down, you didn't tell yourself, ah, forget it. It looks like I wasn't meant to walk. No, you got up again and again and again. But over time, society, family, people, they put beliefs on you that made you feel small and in return, play small. And over time, years go by and those beliefs get cemented into your mind, even though they don't always serve you and your success. But you have the power to shift that today, right now, by making the conscious decision to counter the thoughts and beliefs that are getting in your way and rewrite them with positive thoughts to help you move forward, even when you're unsure of the outcome. And by the way, it's okay to let like fear get in the car. Okay, let fear get in the car, but don't let that sucker take the wheel. Because the second it takes the wheel, it's going to drive you into the wall or make a U-turn in a direction that you do not want to go in. The greatest tragedy today is wasted human potential. I urge us all to change the narrative, shift the story, and confidently lead the way, starting with yourself first. Thank you.